Welcome to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to talk all about OpenAI's new GPTs. Now there's been a lot that's happened in the last few days for OpenAI, lots of big announcements on their dev day, but this one is a big one because they are talking about allowing everyone to create chatbots and potentially putting them up in a store. And so today we're going to talk about GPTs. We're going to show you exactly how to make one and how easy it is to make one yourself and really talk about where the future is going here. But let's back up and talk about what GPTs are. If you think about an AI chatbot today, you can have conversations with it and ask a lot of helpful questions. You can see over here I've asked uh, logo design, formatting text, there's definitely some programming. I even asked it for office etiquette suggestions. And so ChatGPT is very, very, um, very capable of a wide variety of tasks. On the other hand, without really directing it, sometimes it gets muddled. And this is an example I cooked up and, and it, it came out very, very well, because I asked it to write some Python code to add numbers. Uh, I put creatively, I was hoping for some sort of fun, interesting code, but it, it had no clue what I was asking for. But as soon as I gave it a bit more context, I, it's an engineer for a software development firm. I want a function that I can copy and paste. It understood. And so it pasted this code for me with you know, uh, comments and documentation, example usage, really good formatting, albeit really straightforward, self-explanatory function. But the idea here is if you start your conversation with a bit of context, with the right prompt, with the right instructions, with the right background, you're going to get vastly superior results. And this is where GPTs come in. If I start asking OpenAI, ChatGPT, point blank, help me write, you know, something about uh, a beautiful island that I can see from my porch. Um, it, it might give you something you can work with, but when you have a creative writing coach, somebody prompted already that this is a creative writer, they want to write professionally, that, uh, you know, maybe your target audience, those kind of things, you're going to have a result much closer to what you want. And so by putting these GPTs out there, you don't need to be a prompt engineer. You don't need to pre-prep all of your conversations. Um, and it's just removing some of the friction of using chat GPT. And so some of these use cases, we see a lot of creative writing coach, tech advisor, I think there's something here with cooking. I've seen all of these. And over time, I think we're going to get more sophisticated. You're going to see more examples of really, really, really good AIs. And I think the most interesting thing is that we're going to see a store um, and potentially paid bots. So before I get started, or perhaps I should show you really quickly, Creating your own chat GPT, uh, creating your own GPT is really quite simple. You give it a name, you give it a description and instructions. That's all there is to it because you, you can throw it all in there and you can make it extremely short. So uh, you are a software engineer or you could give it very, very specific instructions. You are a software engineer for a large enterprise, security is paramount. You need to write very um, strong, very uh, solid code. And here's how I want you to write it. And here's a sample format. You could go on and on and on in your instructions to really detail how you want it. And, and I'll talk about some of these other pieces uh, afterwards. But what I wanted to go through is just some of the variety of bots out there. because. OpenAI is completely new at this. You have some of the basic ones, um, just the art, to, sorry, text to art. You have data analysis, you have the classic chatbot, you have a uh, creative writing coach. Um, so most of these are fairly, fairly standard. 
But OpenAI has a couple competitors. There is Tao from Quora, and I just wanted to show you this because there is a very wide variety of potential bots. First of all, text to art. There's a whole line of these, and you can start prompting in different ways. This one is realistic images. This one's more logo, so you can think the prompt and the instructions are pretty clear. I want realistic or I want simple lines. Um, you have a YouTube thumbnail generator, some more text to art. I thought that might have been the YouTube summarizer. Um, history answering questions, pretending to be people, uh, cooking, there's a YouTube summarizer, Excel formulas. Um, but where I wanted to show you that it is going to get more and more sophisticated are these game bots. Now there's definitely other ways you can do this, but zombie survival, you're going to play through a game in which there is a narrative experience and you're going to be given options as you go. You select them, maybe uh, uh, completely open as well. Um, and, and you get to play through this. And here, th same thing, tarot, uh, tarot cards, uh, divination, uh, playing Uno. It can get a lot more sophisticated than just change the tone, help me write things. Um, Instead, it could get quite sophisticated. And if you start tying in internet, images, all of the features available to a chatbot, I lack the imagination to think of it, but you can create some very sophisticated experiences. Uh, the other one I wanted to talk about and just rant very quickly is character.ai. This is probably the single uh, biggest number of bots out there. It is, um, it is astonishing. If you look at this one, Hu Tao, there's 58.7 million conversations. That is a lot, a lot, a lot of conversations. And all of these numbers are huge. This is 153.5 million. Uh, this one's 237 million. Uh, I didn't even know that it went that high. But you'll notice that these ones are all video game or anime characters, and, and that is really character AI's main drive. Uh, some of these, like Coding Assistant, is different, but most of these are talking to people, uh, pretending to be others. So uh, Albert Einstein, their instruction might be, pretend you're Albert Einstein, hear some basic information. And, and that kind of a prompt will work just about through any of these, whether it's Tao or Tony Soprano or or um, Campfire Girl Takibi. Socrates, that's an interesting one. Only 4.7 million. Um, but we can create very simple bots, but you can also create uh, very, very sophisticated games, role-playing, learning utilities, curious utilities here, creating PowerPoint presentations. Um, YouTube Summarizer is one that, that I think is really helpful. Okay, so uh, let's get back here. When we want to create a new GPT, we go into basic chat GPT and you're going to uh, come down to explore and that will give you all the bots and you're going to have a create a GPT. Now I should point out that well, I'm going to take a look at uh, this one. Um, you can save for yourself, for people with a link, or, or for the public at large. And, and I personally am interested always in building apps for everyone, but if you have a specific use case that you keep using, and say, um, I, I have a very specific type of report I write for work every time. It always has this as a header, this as a subheading, and this one, um, this final conclusion. You can do that and make it available only to yourself. That's an option. Okay, let's get back here. When you start and you click that create a GPT, you have the option to just talk to GPT Builder. This is a chatbot that will help you build a chatbot. How meta is that? And so I want to build a bot 
that uh, pretends it is Albert Einstein, it will respond in a way Albert Einstein would. Now luckily Albert Einstein is fairly famous. I don't know that we have all that many conversations with him. Um, so maybe this would be better with a video game character where a lot more of their conversations or dialogue is kept online. But it's well-known person. Um, you might not need to train it a whole lot. So it, it takes a second and you can see that it, it you know, did the circling around and then now it's going to suggest a few things. Sure, that sounds good. It gave it a name, Professor Curiosity, and it's going to make those changes. Mm, running a bit slower here. Oh, cool, it's even going to generate a profile picture. This is the easy chatbot, by the way. So we're going to build this one quickly, and then we're going to going to build one more, which takes advantage of the other features. But, you know what? Let's just start creating this on the side here. Bear with me for now as it generates an image. There we go, that's a pretty cool image. Um, Perfect, okay, so it has added it in. We have a profile picture. You can, of course, upload a photo. Uh, you have a name, this is a subtitle. These ones, you can decide on your own. Here is the instruction. The GPT is designed to emulate the persona of Albert Einstein. It should provide responses in the style of Einstein's known communication with a focus on physics and philosophy infused with historical and scientific accuracy. It should also have a touch of playful wit akin to Einstein's personality. I don't know if that, that all fits, but that is a good set of instructions here. And then you have a couple conversation starters, and these are a couple options where you can just put in, and it's going to start the conversation. Now, what we can do is actually upload a knowledge base. And I think you're only allowed 20 to 30 different files, but you can start uploading PDFs, Word documents, all sorts of things in here to add to its library. So in terms of Albert Einstein, you might want to upload some of his famous papers, some of his writings, some of his, uh, some transcripts of his conversations. And you're also able to enable a couple capabilities. So a code interpreter, allowing code to run, Dolly image generating, allowing it to just generate images, and finally uh, browsing the web. Now for the most part, I like the bots I think of, I cut out Dolly and Code Interpreter just because they're, they're fairly specific. Um, but web browsing is pretty good. It's, it would be good for Albert Einstein to know what is current in the world of physics. But if you want to play a different role game, if you want him to be stuck in whatever year he's in, um, maybe tick that off. And finally, finally, your option is over here, actions. And what's really cool is that you can start uh, connecting to other APIs. So in this case, um, weather, okay? Uh, you can see that this is the service you get. Uh, this is the base URL. This is how you can uh, get the temperature for a location. Um, and you can actually probably do a couple different paths. So you might do location, you might do country, you might do city, whatever it may be. Um, 
let's let's take another example here. Um, OpenAI profile. Once again, the base API. You're going to have a a path about who you are, um, and that's about it. And of course, you might need some sort of authentication. That is rather sophisticated, so I'm not going to poke too much around on this, but I'm going to save this only for me here. And right now, you can see that I have another chatbot here, and I'm going to ask, what inspires you? All right, I'm not going to let him finish. Uh, let's just stop here. This is great. Um, let's do a more sophisticated chat GPT. So we started this one a little bit earlier. I'm going to ask it, can you create a chatbot that can explain what a non-disclosure agreement is? Draft it and explain it in a way the average person would understand. You may need to break down each section and explain them separately to the user. So what is this? Well, if you think about it, um, one way we could use these chatbots is to help draft contracts. Um, a very, very common contract is called the non-disclosure agreement, which is a confidentiality agreement. You agree not to disclose information. So um, I want the chatbot to be able to draft this up. I want it to be able to explain what is happening in there and explain it to somebody who is not a lawyer. And finally, we're using different pieces here um, to, to showcase the features. This may not be a great idea or a helpful bot, but um, we shall see. So the feature I really want to take advantage of is, um, is uh, the, the uploading files. If I can provide it an example of a good NDA, um, this will be really, really useful. And you can imagine all sorts of other GPTs as well, specializing in different documents or collecting themed documents together to make it available. And hopefully they may take away the 20 to 30 file limit. Okay, so I'm going to skip the image generating because it's, it's quite uh, frustrating to, to do so. And um, yeah, let's come back here. Okay, so let's call it NDA generator. Okay, and what we have here is explains and drafts NDA simply for the average person. Nice subtitle, crappy logo, crappy name. Um, I don't think we're going to need the Dolly image generation or the code interpreter, but web browsing might be useful. Now for me, I like to break down this instruction set. So generally speaking, uh, GPT really understands markdown. So I'm going to create a header and I'm going to say what its role is. The GPT's role is to explain, draft, and clarify non-disclosure agreements, NDAs, in a manner that is easy to understand for the average person. Should be able to break down the sections of each end. Uh, of an NDA and explain them separately. The GPT should avoid uh, legal jargon unless it's necessary and then only with a clear explanation. It should not, okay. This is where I usually have another header that's called prohibitions. And that is do not, do not provide legally binding advice 
but rather educational information to help the user grasp instead warn the user you are not providing legal advice and rather you will provide educational information. Um, another section I, I like to have is sample response. This is this is just an agreement to keep information secret. You can have a couple sample responses in here to illustrate your point, but I'll close this up uh, and we can save. Oh, no. There we go. Okay. I'm moving this off screen quickly because I want to add, upload a file, and I don't particularly want everyone to see the files I have on my computer. So just give me a moment while I find my sample non-disclosure agreement. And I am also going to upload an image. Give me one more second here. Okay. So, dragging this back in here. We don't have an image, but what we have is a sample non-disclosure agreement. And so, I can save this and we can start using this up. But, um, let's ask uh, Shraf a sample of definition of information that should be kept secret and explain it to me. And so now it has a great example of what normally shows up in a non-disclosure agreement, which is confidential information. That is the term that's used. And generally speaking, uh, this is a good definition, a, that employee comes into contact during the course of employment, which is not publicly known. Um, we can go better. When drafting, please highlight some assumptions you've made and ask the user to confirm those assumptions. For example, where is this NDA? What relationship does the NDA arise from? Employment, service provider, Okay, so you can see immediately what I was very concerned about is that it's arising from an employment uh, relationship, which is not true across the board. If I update this quickly, um, and refresh this page, draft a definition of comp confidential information for me. Hopefully this time around it'll say, I made the assumption that it's an employment relationship. Is that true? And I could tell it, no, I want my brother to keep my information secret or um, a firm that I've partnered with. 
So right here, it's already talking about assuming that's for a general business context, but let me know if the NDA is for a specific industry or type of relationship, like employment. Really good. Um, nice and simple. Okay, so what we've seen here is that um, you now have the tools to create a really helpful and um, chat GPT, GPT. Uh, you have conversation starters, instructions, and this is where uh, potentially a lot of work can be put and potentially very little. We took that basic Albert Einstein one and it seemed to work okay. Um, I don't know if it's great, but as we start testing this NDA generator, you're going to see um, you're probably going to see all sorts of little pitfalls that you can address in this instruction. So uh, one example was that assumption. And finally, with these additional features, uh, I could generalize this to any sort of business, uh, legal documents, maybe not just non-disclosures, but maybe quotes, statements of work, maybe it's invoices. Um, and I could give it more samples. Uh, I could have it consult the web beforehand. So if I'm doing some fast moving area of the law, like privacy, have it check beforehand every time before, uh, before actually writing out the document. And finally, uh, actions. That's the one where, yeah, uh, we've built APIs on this site before and Maybe if you have a repository of data or have something that can do really cool stuff, that might help. So in this case, I think it's possible that we could take all of this after it's drafted and ask it to send it to an API that creates Word documents or PDFs rather than have the user you know, copy and paste this. And finally, there's this additional setting. I don't want you know, open AI to keep training on my data. So we can save and you can make it public as well for the GPT store. So um, that's all there is to it. There's no code involved in creating these GPTs, but you have that same uh, engineering mindset. You have a problem, you propose a solution, you test it out, there are some pitfalls, you adjust the instructions and you keep going down that path until you have hopefully really, really good GPTs that you can share on the GPT store and hopefully um, help everyone else out as well. I think this is a really, really exciting development because it just empowers so many people that have great ideas and allows them to, to build things that would have been impossible just a few years ago. So if you build anything cool, uh, share it down below in the comments, and I will see you next week with another project.